We're back with YouTube, with a video. Beautiful day outside. I love this time of year. Right before it gets too hot. You know, it get, it's gonna get super hot in the next two, three weeks and then it starts cooling down. guys update on the iconic grand national um we got the uh the, i got the engine not the engine i'm sorry i have the fuel tank drop had a fuel tank drop um just hooked up my return line just hooked up my return and line for e85 conversion I gotta hook up my uh, my hot wire. That's my hot wire. I'll hook my hot wire on it back up in a minute. But yeah, I got the return line in for the E85 conversion. We're going E85 with this turn line here. So all we gotta do now is pull out the uh, the fuel injectors. Go 80 pound fuel injectors and turbo tweak chip for E85. So I was told um, to let the fuel that's in the tank cycle out. So I'll put, it's about, I think it's like a quarter of the tank. So I'll put, I'll fill E85, run it, fill E85 again, run it. And that should get me where I need to be. And I also got to figure out who's the best person in the area that has the highest rated E85 fuel. So that's what we're going on with that. But um, so also, here on this water line I cut this I didn't cut this short enough so I need to bring that down another half inch to drop this down a little bit more and I got another pipe to go on it a hose to go on it so it'll fit a little bit more snug and um, then we could put my alternator back down and be able to make the appropriate adjustments I want to make with the belt because it was squealing last time so I'm just going through because I had the car sitting like this for a while now because I was messing with the Impala. So now I'm about to put all this stuff back together and get this ready to go to the transmission spot so so we can get this thing, get this thing. All right, so we swapped the, uh, the holes out, got it back in. So just gonna clean all this up a little bit, leak a little bit. Of and it freeze, but not concerned with that because I got to swap the radiator and all that stuff out anyway. And change the reservoirs because I want everything up here looking crisp. I got my belts tight. That one could be a little bit tighter, but it should be fine for the AC. So if, if not, if, if that don't work, that's about all I could do with as far as the belt. I'm gonna have to remove that bong and put the oxygen sensor to another place, but when I fire it back up, if it don't squeal, then we we cooking with we cooking with Crisco, baby. And we got the tank in. Got my hot wire and all that stuff plugged back up. So yeah, now we got I got to tighten that rear end, leaking a little bit from somewhere. And my door panels. Upper door panel. But yeah, so one, <clears throat> once those uh, fuel injectors get in, put everything together, put that turbo back in, fry it on up, and we, and we good to go. And I'm going to run this turbo for a little while because I bought it and haven't had a chance to fully see what's going on with it yet, but if if it doesn't do what I want it to do, then I'm gonna go to a 5858. That's a TA33. But um I forgot the name of the company. But they make a 5858, they make a 6262, 6264, all for the hot air. But um we're gonna see because that's not even turned all the way up yet. So we're gonna see what we got going on with that. 
But yeah, we button back up. Got I want to give uh, you guys some game on the uh, the '84 Grand National um, on why this car is so iconic. For those that don't know, those that know, which is most of the, most of my subscribers and and supporters of the channel, they know exactly what it is. But if you're new to the channel or you're new to Grand Nationals, I want to give you a little perspective on what the Grand National was in the eight from '84 to '86. This is '84. One of the first of the turbo uh, lineup of the Grand National, Buick Grand National. So this is '84. So '84, '85, they had the car that they considered the the hot air cars. So these cars pretty much run a turbo directly off of the exhaust from the engine, no intercooler. So the 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 exhaust doesn't go through an intercooler or anything like that to cool the air off or whatever the intercooler is supposed to do. So that car, this car, don't have that. This car is a hot air car. In the coolers came in 86. 86, they started producing, I believe, with 235 horsepower. For 87, they went up to 245 horsepower. And the GNX, which they only made about 500 or so of those cars, took it up to 275 horsepower. And though all of those numbers are, are modest numbers because they didn't want to, GM didn't want to overshine or outshine the staple of the GM brand, which was the Corvette. And the 87 Grand National was faster than the Corvette. This Grand National might have been faster than the Corvette, but we know for a fact the 87 Grand National was faster, was faster than the Corvette. Actually, in, in actuality, I think it was only two cars faster than the Grand National, and that was the Porsche 911 Turbo and the Lamborghini Countach 5000. So to give you a perspective, this to give you the, the idea of what those were. Now, mind you, that was the 80s, and those cars weren't as fast as what, I mean, you damn near outrun a Lamborghini with a regular Camaro now. But, you know, that was 40 years ago. So when you look at the cars from 40 years ago, like the, um, the 84 Mustang GT, the 84 Mustang GT was this car's direct competition. And in 84, the Mustang GT came with a 5.0 liter high output V8, which produced 175 horsepower at 4,000 RPM and 245 foot pounds of torque at 2,400 RPM. Now, this car could produce 200 horsepower at 4,400 RPM and 300 foot pounds of torque at 2,400 RPM. So what that means is at 2400 RPM, you're getting full torque. And that's where your pull comes from with the car. You know, when you, that, that, that thing that sits you back in the seat, that's what that, that's what that is, right? And so now you wanna, we wanna push it up to 95, right? The 95 Ford Mustang GT was also a 5.0 V8. It produced 215 horsepower at 4,200 RPMs and 285 foot-pounds of torque at 3,400 RPMs. Now, this car is 11 years after the Grand National. And if any of you, you know, driven the early F-bodies, I don't think it's f body or Fox-bodies, sorry, Fox-body cars. If any of you driven those cars, you understand those cars was, was, was very quick. I had, I had a 95 Mustang GT. And... Um, man, you know, it was fun. You know, it wasn't as fast as, as they marketed it to be. It was fun, but the numbers or the specs in comparison to this car, which was 11 years earlier, lets me know how iconic this car was during its time. So I just wanted to put that information out there for those of you who really aren't that familiar with why the Grand National or what they are, what they like the holy grail of the muscle car. And the thing is, I think that the the Grand National might go down as the most one of the most iconic muscle cars ever, not because I'm biased, but because they're one of the most sought after cars out there on the market now, today. And they were they don't produce they weren't mass produced like let's say the Hellcat. Now the Grand National was the Hellcat of its time. Right, but the difference is they produce so many Hellcats and so many variants of the Hellcat. So, for example, 
they only produce 500 or so GNXs, right? So they produce 500 or so GNX models of the Grand National. How many red eyes? How many Hellcats? How many Hellcat red eyes? How many Hellcat jailbreaks? You see what I'm saying? That that are out there. So you kind of like dilute the, the car being special. So when you buy the Hellcats now, and I like the Hellcats. I like how they look. I think it's the best looking muscle car out there. I just think it's overpriced. So I don't have yeah, it. so when you buy the Hellcats now, you're looking, you're really getting the car for what it actually is. The performance is fun. You know, the supercharged, the seven, eight hundred horsepower, you're getting all of that. Now, the thing is, what will that car be in 30, 40 years from now with so many variants of it? It was a police car, right? So you have the, the Charger GT, you have the Charger Scat Pack, you have the V8 with the Hemi, which is the sort of thing, I guess, the same thing as the GT. Then you got the Scat Packs, then you got the Wide Body Scat Packs, then you got the Hellcat, then you got the Wide Body Hellcat, then you have the Daytona packages, then you have the the Red Eye, then you have the Jailbreak, then you have all these last call editions that they released this past year to up the price on the cars. So when you factor all of that in to the Hellcat, then it kind of dilutes the brand, you know, and not, not to mention the police cars. So just imagine like right now, the Crown Vicks, like all the Crown Vicks you see now, 90% of them are old police cars, right? Because they stopped making the, the Crown Vicks for public cons for public purchase. Oh man, I don't, it, sometime in 2000, in the 2000s. So the only people who can get the car was, I, I forgot the actual date, I'm just trying to point. The only people that can get the car were rental car companies and police stations or government, com government officials, government, government um, agencies. They only be like only two, entities that can get the car so the older versions of the grand of the of the crown vix they kind of like trashed out right because it's 20 30 years later so they're they're gone they're they're diluted. they wasn't something that somebody wanted to covet or keep or whatever so they're they're kind of gone so the cars that's out there now are old police cars or old fleet leaders or fleet vehicles from budget rental enterprise budget enterprise uh hertz so forth you know so that's going to be the same thing that happened with the Dodge Charger. They didn't make Regal police cars. I think they made it. They say that they, I don't I haven't confirmed it, but it was said that the FBI had a couple of Grand Nationals uh, custom or specially made for them. But I, but as far as a regular production police car, there was no Regals. Kind of the same thing with the, the, the Impala. You know, but the, the Impala is a little more iconic because it's just something about the Chevy is just a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? So even though they had the Impala, which basically, basically that's the police car with the SS package on it. That's all it really. That's all a 96 Impala really is. Is a, is a police package, a police interceptor with an SS package in it. That's all it really is. You know what I'm saying? So, but that which was just different. You know what I'm saying? And they only ran the. Uh, the um that version of the of the b body with the full wheel well they only ran that version i believe like three four years right so before that anything before that you had the kind of like the um the cut off rear wheel well you know and those are police cars also up north but for the most part you know you only had so many years of that and then with the ss the actual ss was the only the 96 was the only one that had the shift in the floor so there was a little bit difference between that car. that's why everybody wants the 96s over you know the 94 95s you know so it, it just it just it hit a little bit different but I, I just feel that's why i want a charger but i'm so afraid of buying the charger because of if i get it let's just say i buy it just to keep it like my 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 brother uncle bought this car brand new. I still got the bill of sale from when this car was bought brand new from the dealership, all right? Uncle bought it, kept it to Uncle Pass, aunt sold it to my, my brother, brother kept it for years, and then he sold it to me, you know? So, you know, is this something that I want? Yeah, I, I'm keeping this for my son. I sell that in Apollo before I sell this, this Grand National. This Grand National ain't going nowhere, you know, because I've pretty much about finished everything.
waiting on waiting on my my seals for the trim that's why i haven't put the top part of the doors on so once i get the seals i put the top part of the door back on but all this has been redone all this is redone i got to repaint that because that the finish on that is sticky so it gets dirty you put your fingers on it gets dirty so i'm repainting that top portion and i got the deck cover suede everything speakers i'm waiting to put my system in new carpet just gotta just have to um to uh vacuum it got my speakers land ran speaker wife ran for my system backup camera so you know she all she all good man but this is gonna be something that my son i have you know and not and not to take anything away from the charger because i like them you know but i'm just explaining to you this video is about why the grand national is such a special car and what because this car is a 1984 it's 2023 it's called 39 years old you know and if i pull up beside once this car is done i mean how when i drive the car now and and the paint is bad when i drive the car now you know and pull up i get more i get more attention in this car than you get with your hellcat you know what I'm saying? Especially amongst people that's 25 or older. And the only reason why the 25 year olds know about the car is because this is the car their daddies and their granddaddies were in love with. You know, and I just did all the right things to it. You know, it, the Corvette brakes back, you know, sweet bars, QA1, QA1 control arms. I mean, I did, I did the things to the car, you know, so. I just want to get this video out to you guys, man, let you know why the Grand National is so iconic, in my opinion, and back it up with numbers of why it was so special back then. You know, when they when 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 the when the when the Regal run won the race at NASCAR, which I believe it was 80, 1982, you know, they say what 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 wins on Sunday sells on Monday. They came out with the Grand National in 82, it wasn't turbo. It wasn't it was it wasn't a uh, force induction. Two years later, they created a mass producer force induction car, which is a turbo. Two years after that, they get it was intercoolers, and here we are with an iconic muscle car that the likes of Kevin Hart, um, Jay Leno, you know, anybody who's a real car enthusiast that collects cars, they have one of these. And I'm gonna get another one. My my next car I really want is I might end up with SS uh, SS Monte Carlo, but I want one of those too. But and they, I can get into that cheaper than I can get into a Grand National. But I do want an 87 T-Top. It don't have to be a Gen X, but it got to be a T-Top. My guy that does my, my work on my cars, he got the motor for the Impala. He actually does T-Tops. And I like the fact that his T-Tops, they look factory. I mean, shit, you, you can't tell this aftermarket by looking at it. You know, I seen him, I seen him, do, I seen him do one on a... Um, on a uh, on a Monte Carlo, and he said he would do it for me for like five grand, you know, and that may be an option, but I'm leaning more against it because of the fact of the history of this particular car, the sentimental value of it, where it came from, how I got it, and I want to kind of keep it pure to what it was. So eventually, I will be swapping out that steering wheel and these Ruchis for a uh, GNX replica wheel at some point it might not actually be a gnx replica but it's going to look like a gnx replica to you know it might be a forge auto or something because i do want the the uh forge auto with big 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 xl cap but um but you know we'll get there but that's it man you know like share subscribe and support